topic, I decided to talk about an application of hyperbolic functions because both in this class and in my differential equation class, I've heard that they hold the key to the universe. So I thought I might find a way to figure um, out how they play into the physics that I understand. And I think this is sort of based off a homework problem that we did as well. So what I'm going to talk about is quadratic drag. So the quadratic drag force has the form c v squared, where c is just some constant. And this applies whenever you have sort of things moving through air, like free fall. So things moving relatively quickly, where what's more important is not like the physical pressure of molecules on whatever's moving, but instead it's the turbulence. So using Newton's second law, um, I get the equation m v dot equals m g gravity, force due to gravity, minus CV squared if down is our plus direction. So you would have to break that into both the X and Y components. So I have them written out right here um, as a function of both X and Y. Ah, okay, so these problems aren't solvable. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we would need to use no numerical solutions and that's methods and that's not going to happen. So instead, we can use a more idealized special case. Um, and what I'm going to do is just have the motion go in one direction. So um, I'm going to call this a classic problem because that's what they call every important problem now. And we have a ball, and it's just fallen. It's being released with zero velocity at time equals zero. And in this situation, the velocity in the x direction is just going to be zero, and the velocity in the y direction it's just going to be the velocity. So we have this much simpler equation, mv dot is equal to mg minus cv squared, again, when down is the plus y direction. So the first thing that we're going to find is the terminal velocity, because it will eventually hit that terminal velocity. And terminal velocity occurs when your drag force up is equal to the force going down, in this case gravity. That's why there's zero acceleration. So we can set the mv dot to zero, and then you can just bring the mg over, um, divide by the c, and solve for v, and you get that the terminal velocity is just the square root of mg over c. So we can now write our differential equation from before in terms of our terminal velocity. So I've just written the um, v dot as dv dt to make it easier in the future. So we have our equation like it was before. Um, to try to get the terminal velocity term into it, I factored out the c, and then I have divided both of these by vt and factored that out, vt squared. And then we know that, um, because this term right here is, if this is vt, then take away the square root, this is vt squared. Um, we know that we have our equation for um, terminal velocity, that if we solve for g in this equation, g is equal to vt squared c over m. So if we divide this m over, we can just substitute that as a g. So that is a very clean, simple looking equation. So um, all I'm going to do is so we can solve this differential equation, I'm going to separate by variables. So all the v's go over here. And all the t's go over here. There are no t's other than the dt. And we're going to take the integral of both sides. Um, because we're dropping it from rest, the initial velocity is 0, and we're going to sum v. I just called v prime. And we're starting at time equals 0, so we start at t equals 0 and go until t. But wait, oh my gosh, did you know that this is the integral for arc hyperbolic tangent of x? Crazy. So if you see, if we set x equal to v over t, we're already in that form, so we can use this integral to our advantage. So um, if you do a change of variables, you use substitution, you get this, remembering that when you take the dx, the vt is going to pop out that you can bring out side of the integral. Then remember to change your limits of integration. So we have that this integral is equal to vt times arctangent of evaluated from v, no, 0 to v over v of t. So I've just 0 drops away. You get this. 
Just in case you've forgotten, this was equal to GDT. The integral of that's really easy, just becomes GT. So you can solve for your velocity, which is right here. And you get the equation V of T is equal to terminal velocity hyperbolic tangent of GT over terminal velocity. And then if you do the integral, which I'm not going to do right here, um, you can get the position as a function of time. And just keep in mind that the hyperbolic tangent is just the hyperbolic sine or the hyperbolic cosine, just like you would intuitively think. So this is what you get. So I know what you're thinking. What does this look like? I know I was. Yay. You go over here. Do, 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 do. It might help to think about what the hyperbolic tangent um, function looks like. It looks a lot like inverse tangent, except it's um, sort of, it goes off toward infinity at negative one and one. So it would make sense that we're not going to concern ourselves with negative t, because we're dropping the ball at t equals zero. And instead of going off toward infinity at, not, in, yeah, infinite x's at um, one, it goes off at v of t, v sub t, our terminal velocity. And then if we remember what the Cauch function looks like, it looks like a parabola, although it's not a parabola. And it would make sense that when we took the ln of this, um, we would get like a straight line looking function. So yeah, that is an application of how hyperbolic functions help explain quadratic drag. <laughs>